والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين وبعد Firstly, just to correct something that Akhi Nasser said, I don't have a PhD in medicine. In medicine, you become a doctor by getting a degree, which is MB, CHB or MBBS. So that's the degree I do have. Um, and secondly, I'm not a sheikh. I'm just a brother like you brothers. And you've already been listening to the sheikhs. And inshallah, we can just share some uh, benefits um, that we find in the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So today, I was uh, asked to talk about um, the Islamic viewpoint on Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam, the noble uh, prophet and messenger of Jesus. Um, and the issue is topical because we are obviously in the season um, which the Christians um, celebrate uh, what they call Christmas, which is nothing other than an innovated uh, festival, which was innovated uh, many hundreds of years after Isa alayhi salam and was actually the result of polytheistic innovations um, entering into the religion and we'll talk a little bit about that and it's topical for that reason also topical for the reason that unfortunately as we have seen in current times then this innovation of celebrating prophets and messengers birthdays has crept into Islam as well and we're seeing that it, it's growing and growing so maybe inshallah we can come to some lessons from the story of Isa alayhi salam which will help us um, in regards to practicing our deen and the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa by learning the mistakes that the followers of Isa alayhi salam made. So firstly, we Muslims, where do we gain our belief in Isa alayhi salam from? Okay. And the general belief that the Muslims have in the messengers is included in the issues of Iman and Aqeedah. And generally, the issues of Iman are things to do with the ghayb, the unseen. Okay? So what is it about our belief in the messengers which is to do with the unseen? Okay? Because everybody knows, for example, historically, that our Prophet Muhammad wasallam existed. Likewise, the existence of Isa a.s. is known widely across the world. It's known throughout the whole dunya that there was a person called Isa a.s. who lived 2,000 years ago and who came with a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Likewise, we know about Musa a.s., Ibrahim a.s., etc. What is it then that makes this to do with the belief in the unseen? And that is that it isn't the belief in their existence alone, but it's the belief that they were messengers that were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the issue that has to do with the they. So our beliefs concerning Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam are those which are indicated from the wahi, from the revelation, from the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So a quick summary of what we believe about Isa alayhi salam and what can be um, a sort of um, starting point where we have a discussion about this with Christians, for example, when we give them da'wah, is that we believe that Isa alayhi salam was one of the slaves of Allah. He was a slave and a servant and the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was one of his noble messengers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to Bani Israel to call them to the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to believe in Allah alone and to worship Allah alone. And we as Muslims, we respect and revere Isa alayhi salam. And we await his return to the earth, we await his second coming. And we as Muslims consider him to be one of the greatest of the messengers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever sent to mankind. And a Muslim never simply refers to him as Isa, but we always say alayhi salam. So this is the viewpoint that the Muslims have about Isa alayhi salam in a quick summary. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in Surah Al-Saf, um, ayah number 6, وَإِذْ قَالَ Isa ibn Maryam يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِ مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدِ فَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ قَالُوا هَذَا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ 
Allah SWT tells us, and remember when Isa, the son of Maryam, said, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of Allah unto you, confirming the Torah which came before me, and giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name will be Ahmad. But when he came to them with clear proofs, meaning when Ahmad, Muhammad وسلم, came to them with clear proofs, then these people, they said, this is plain magic. So this is a quick nutshell of the message and the mission of Isa السلام, that he was sent as a messenger from Allah to the Bani Israel, to the Jews. And he came confirming the Torah which was with them and he came also bringing glad tidings and prophecy of the coming of the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu So he came preceding the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu And also Allah SWT tells us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, line number 72, وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحُ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَبُدُ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ الْجَنَّةِ but the Masih, the Messiah, Isa alayhi salam, he said, O children of Israel, worship Allah, my Lord and your Lord. Verily, whoever sets up partners in worship with Allah, that Allah has forbidden paradise to him, and the fire will be his abode. And for the Zalimun, the polytheists and the wrongdoers, there will be no helpers. So this is again a summary of the mission of Isa alayhi salam. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him talking to Bani Israel, not to the whole of mankind, but to Bani Israel. And he ordered them with Tawheed, that they should turn their worship to Allah. And he clarified to them that Allah is his Lord and their Lord as well. So there's no um, place for anyone to take him as the Lord. And then he clarified further that whoever sets up partners in worship with Allah, then Allah has forbidden paradise to that person. And instead, whoever is forbidden from paradise, they will be having their abode in the hellfire. And for those people, and Allah calls them Zalimun, because they do the greatest zulm, the zulm azim, which is shirk, there will be no helpers. Okay, zulm means, translated literally, is oppression. And one of the sort of technical meanings of it is to put something in other than its place. Okay, so dhulm, oppression, is when you put something in other than the rightful place that it belongs. Okay? And if you do that with the worship of Allah, you worship other than Allah, alongside Allah or instead of Allah, then you are doing the greatest dhulm that could be done, the greatest oppression that could be done is by you not recognizing the um, right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Isa salam was of course not a god, nor a son of God, or anything like that that the Christians claim. And Allah SWT tells us this in the Quran, in Surah Ma'idah as well. لَقَدْ كَفَرَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْمَسِيحُ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ Surely those who have disbelieved who say that Allah is the Messiah, the son of, Mar uh, son of Maryam. And then Allah SWT tells us as well in Surah Tawbah, ayah number 30, that this ship that they've done with the messengers is something that they've done before as well, the people have done before. And that the hearts of those people who do this kind of ship, they resemble each other. So in uh, Surah Tawbah, ayah number 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, وَقَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ أُزَيْرٌ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ الْمَسِيحُ إِبْنُ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ قَوْلُهُمْ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ يُضَاهِئُونَ قَوْلَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قبل and the Jews, they said that Uzair, Ezra, is the son of Allah. And the Christians, they say that the Messiah, the son of uh, Mary, the uh, Masih, he is the son of Allah. That is their saying with their mouths. And it's resembling the saying of those who disbelieved before them. And Allah's curse be upon them how they are deluded away from the truth. Likewise, Isa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the first words that he spoke. Isa alayhi salam, he spoke in the cradle, and we'll come to um, more about. The first words, however, that Isa alayhi salam spoke, they freed him 
from this accusation that the people have started to make against him that he is the son of Allah. He said, قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِيَ الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيَّا He, Isa alayhi salam, said, Verily, I am a slave of Allah. He has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. In Surah Maryam, ayah number 30. So, we as Muslims, we believe that Isa alayhi salam was one of the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supported his uh, messengership with miracles which proved that he was speaking the truth. And during his mission, during the mission of Isa al Islam, Isa al Islam was given many uh, miracles, many great and astounding miracles. And these are narrated in the Quran. Um, so, for example, in uh, Surah Al Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about um, some of these miracles. That Isa al-Islam said, "Anni qad jiltukum bi ayatim min Rabbikum. Anni akhluku lakum min al-tini kahiyat al-tayri. Fa anfuku fihi fa yakunu tayr bi izni Allah. Wa ubri al-akmah wa al-abrasa. Wa uhi al-mauta bi izni Allah." I have come to you with a sign from your Lord. I make for you out of clay, as it were, the figure of a bird, and I breathe into it, and it becomes a bird by Allah's leave. And I heal the blind and the lepers, and I raise the dead by Allah's leaves. So here, um, this Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us about some of the great miracles that Isa al Islam was sent with to show the Jews, Bani Israel, that he is the Messenger of Allah that has been sent to guide them back to the truth that they have been leaving. And one of those signs from Allah is that he would make Isa al Islam would make out of clay the figure of a bird and then blow into it, and by the permission of Allah, that bird would come to life. And they will see that. And likewise, by Allah's uh, leave and Allah's permission, He would uh, heal the blind and the lepers, and He would also raise the dead and bring them back to life. So these were great miracles. And um, these were things that the, um, the Jews at the time, they were sort of trying to do with black magic and other things like this. And they, they've got a uh, thing within their Jewish Kabbalah which is about trying to bring dead things to life. And Isa al Islam came and he did this in front of them and showed them that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not uh, some of the uh, things and the trickery that they're trying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, tells us also about some of the other um, miracles as well. One of those miracles was that he spoke in the cradle, he spoke as a baby and that he also healed the blind and the sick as well as reviving the dead and the message that he carried and the fact that um, he brought a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us uh, more about this in many places in the Quran in Surah Ma'idah, ayah number 110 for example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا إِسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ أُذْكُرْ نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَى وَالِدَتِكَ إِذْ أَيَّدْتُكَ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَحْدِ وَكَحْلَ وَإِذْ أَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَحِيَّةِ الطَّيْرِ بِإِذْنِي فَتَنْفُقُ فِيهَا فَتَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي وَتُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ بِإِذْنِي وَإِذْ تُخْرِجُ الْمَوْتَ بِإِذْنِي وَإِذْ كَفَفْتُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَنْكَ إِذْ جِئْتَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ Remember when Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O Isa, son of Maryam, remember my favor to you and to your mother, when I supported you with Ruhul Qudus, uh, meaning Jibreel alayhi salam, so that you spoke to the people in the cradle and in maturity. And when I taught you writing and Al-Hikmah, and the Torah and the Injil, and when you made out of clay a figure like that of a bird by my permission, and you breathed into it and it became a bird by my permission. And you healed those who were born blind and the lepers by my permission. And when you brought forth the dead by my permission, and when I restrained the children of Israel from you, meaning when they resolved to kill you, as you came unto them with clear proofs, and the disbelievers among them said, this is nothing but evident magic. So here we're seeing some of the other miracles that Allah SWT blessed Isa alayhi salam with and supported him with. And from those is that he spoke in the cradle, 
he was uh, given revelation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he was uh, this with the Injil and likewise he was making these figures out of clay which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused to become birds and he would uh, be able to heal those who were born blind and those who were lepers and bring forth the dead as well and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from Bani Israel who resolved to kill him. So Bani Israel had made a resolution that they would now, uh, they couldn't face his message by any arguments or anything else, so they would kill him. So because of this, they made a big plot to kill him, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him from that plot by a miraculous means. So just to have a quick uh, overview of the uh, life of Isa alayhi salam, then his life began also miraculously with a miraculous birth. And we as Muslims, we believe that Isa alayhi salam was born from his mother Maryam, who was a virgin, and there was no father. And that is something which is obviously normally impossible, but nothing is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he wants something to do, be, he just says, be, and it is. And the Quran is the only book which came and confirmed that Isa alayhi salam was born by this miraculous way, that he was born by this virgin birth. And the Quran has a, a whole surah dedicated to Maryam alayhi salam and her purity. And she is considered the most pure woman of the whole of the creation. And she, Maryam she, alayhi salam, she was the daughter of Imran, who was a pious and righteous man, and from the scholars of Bani Israel. And she herself, she strove extremely hard in worship, and she withdrew from the people, and she stayed in seclusion and worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until there was no peer, there was no match for her in terms of the amount and the quality of the worship that she was doing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent angels to her who gave her glad tidings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen her. And then Isa alayhi salam was born from her miraculously. And this was done by the same power by which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had produced Adam alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam without a father or a mother. And he created Isa alayhi salam with a mother and without a father. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in Surah Al Imran. He says, Inna mathala Isa in the Allahi ka mathali Adam. Khalaqahum min turabin thumma qala lahu kun fayakun. The verily the likeness of Isa alayhi salam before Allah is the likeness of Adam. He created him from dust, then he said to him, be and he was. So this is the miraculous nature of the creation of uh, Isa alayhi salam. Then the Quran has told us many details, and in the Quran and the Sunnah we find many details about the um, birth of um, Isa alayhi salam and the um, trials that his mother Maryam alayhi salam went through prior to that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, إِذْقَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشِّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِنْ حُسْمُهُ الْمَسِيحُ إِيسَ بْنُ مَرْيَمُ وَجِيهًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةَ وَمِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ Remember when the angel said, O oh Maryam, verily Allah gives you the glad tidings of a word from him, his name will be the Masih, Isa, the son of Maryam, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter, and he will be one of those who are near to Allah. And he will speak to the people in the cradle and in manhood, and he will be one of the righteous. قَالَتْ رَبِّ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي وَلَدٌ وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرٌ قَالَ كَذَلِكَ اللَّهُ يَخْلُقُ مَا يَشَاءُ إِذَا قَضَى أَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونُ She said, Oh my Lord, how shall I have a son when no man has touched me? He said, so it will be for Allah creates what he wills. When he has decreed something, he says to it only be, and it is. So this is all in Surah Ali Imran from Ayahs number 45 to 47. So then um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused Maryam alayhi salam to become pregnant with Isa alayhi salam, you know, without any of the natural means of that at all. And so then Maryam alayhi salam, she had Isa alayhi salam, and that story is also mentioned in the Quran in detail. And then she came to her people, and she was carrying her baby, this newborn baby, her child Isa alayhi salam. And so her people, the Jews, when they saw her, 
they immediately started to think that she has done some terrible sin and they started to denounce her and she did not respond to them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed her, her to do not to respond to them but instead she indicated as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had instructed to her that she should when they make the accusation she should just indicate towards the baby so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us um, about this that فَأَتَتْ بِهِ قَوْمَهَا تَحْمِلُهُمْ قَالُوا يَا مَرْيَمُ لَقَدْ جِئْتِ شَيْئًا فَرِيًّا then she brought him, the baby, Isa alayhi salam, to her people, carrying him. They said, O oh Mary, indeed you have bought a thing which is fariya, which is a mighty uh, bad thing. Ya ukta haruna, ma kana abu kimra asawin, wa ma kanat ummuki bagiya. O sister of Harun, your father was not a man who used to commit adultery, nor was your mother an unchaste woman. Fa asharat ilayhi. قَالُوا كَيْفَ نُكَلِّمُ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الْمَحْدِ صَبِيًّا Then she pointed to him, to the baby, to Isa alayhi salam, and they said, how, the, how can we talk to the one who is a child in the cradle? So this, this is all in Surah Maryam. Likewise then, Isa alayhi salam miraculously replied to them straight away. As soon as they said this, how can we talk to this one who is in the cradle, to this small baby? Why are you pointing us to the baby to answer the accusations that we're making? And then immediately, Isa alayhi salam, by the permission of Allah, he responded to them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, he said, Qala inni Abdullahi atani al kitaba wa ja'alani nabiyya. That he said, verily I am a slave of Allah, he has given me the scripture and made me a prophet. Wa ja'alani mubarakan ayna ma kuntu wa awsani bis salati wa zakati ma duntu hayya. And he has made me blessed wherever I may be. And he has enjoined on me the prayer and the zakat as long as I live. And dutiful to my mother. And made me not arrogant or unblessed. And salam be upon me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I shall be raised alive again. Okay, so this is the message that Isa Islam gave to his home, even from the cradle. Okay. Just one thing I want to mention here is the last ayah, where Isa um, said that Salam uh, be upon me the day I was born, the day I die, and the day I shall be raised alive. Mm -hmm. So some of the Christian missionaries and the uh, Christian debaters, they take this ayah and they twist it. And they say that this ayah is accepting the crucifixion and the resurrection. And that this is um, showing um, the resurrection of Christ like that they believe in. And the answer to them is that this is not the case because if what is they say is true, then this ayah should say that salam be upon me the day um, that I was born, the day I died, the day I was resurrected, resurrected, then the day I die again, then the day I'm resurrected again. Yeah, but it doesn't say that. It mentions what? Peace be upon me the day I was born. We know that day. And the day I die. Okay? That day is still to come. That day will still come. We'll mention that. And the day that I shall be raised alive. Meaning the day of judgment. When everybody will be raised alive. And it's important that we know these things. Because sometimes these Christians, they bring uh, these things and people get confused. And they um, start to waver uh, because of these arguments. But they're easily answer, answered. And one thing that uh, Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, um, which is relevant here, is that whenever the people of falsehood, any people of falsehood, whether they're Muslims who are upon innovations, or whether they are non-Muslims who are coming with falsehood from outside of the religion of Islam, whatever they bring as a proof for their falsehood, in that proof itself you will find the answer to that falsehood. That proof itself will contain indication against them and against the argument that they're bringing against the truth. So for example here they bring this ayah, what answers them? The ayah answers them itself. Okay, and it does that consistently. <coughs> so now what was the mission of Isa alayhi salam? Obviously the Christians they have their own concept of this and they believe completely uh, different, they basically believe that all of the prophets and messengers that were sent all came with a certain mission. But then Isa came and brought something completely different. So all of the prophets and messengers were all 
telling them that there's you know only one Lord worthy of worship and that he cannot have any offspring, he cannot have any partner, etc. And then they say that instead Isa Islam's come and everything's changed now, suddenly he can now have a son, etc. And this is not the case. And neither did our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, nor did Isa salam come to change the basic Aqeedah um, of Islam. The Aqeedah of Islam has been the same. It's what Allah SWT created us upon with Adam and Islam and it's remained the same throughout all the ages. Every single Prophet and Messenger who has come has come with the same faith. The same Aqeedah, the same Iman. The only thing that's been different is their Shariahs have been different. Some of the laws and the rulings have been appropriate to their time and to their place and to their people that they were sent to. And our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he was the only one who was sent to everyone, to the, all of the nations. And so his Sharia is the one that abrogates all Sharia that have come before and is over all of them. So the Prophet Muhammad and no Isa salam, came to change the basic Aqeedah of the belief in one God, which was brought by earlier Prophets. But they came to confirm that belief and to renew that belief and bring people back onto that belief. And when Isa salam came, then Bani Israel had deviated from the straight path at that time. And they had overstepped the limits that Allah had set. And they had started to do wrong in the earth and spread corruption on the earth. And even to the extent that some of them started to even deny the life after death. They started to even deny that they will be resurrected and that they will be uh, judged and reckoned and that there is any punishment in the next life. And these, they started to indulge in their desires without expecting to be brought uh, to account. And this was the circumstance where Allah SWT sent to them Isa ibn Maryam as a messenger and he taught him the Torah which they had with them and also the Injil. And Allah SWT has told us about this where he said وَيُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّورَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ And he will teach him, Allah will teach him Isa alayhi salam, the book and the hikmah and the Torah and the Injil. And also Allah SWT has told us as well that he was وَرَسُولًا إِلَى بَنِي Israel, And he will make him a messenger to the children of Israel. So Allah SWT revealed to Isa ibn Maryam um, the Injil, the Gospel. And that is not the same as the Gospel that we find today in the hands of the Christians. Rather what the Sunnah has explained, what the scholars have explained uh, with regards to the Injil was that it was contained with the heart of Isa alayhi salam, and he would bring forth from it what was relevant for the people and it was not written down in this uh, form of a book in his lifetime and afterwards people produced things with their own hands and then they started saying that this is from Allah and they started to lie against Allah SWT, and their motivations for that were worldly motivations they wanted to get some share of the dunya by doing that so Allah SWT has told us about in Surah Ma'idah about um, the Injil. Allah SWT has told us, وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْإِنْجِيلَ فِيهِ هُدًا وَنُورٌ وَمُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّورَاتِ وَهُدًا وَمَوْئِذَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And we gave him the Injil, in which was guidance and light and confirmation of the Torah that had come before it, and a guidance and an admonition for the pious people. And also, because he was a messenger and he was sent uh, with his own book and with his own uh, law, he also came and he changed some of the laws for Bani Israel. He allowed, he came with the permission of Allah and the mission from Allah SWT to permit to the Jews some of the things that had previously been forbidden to them. So Allah SWT has told us about this and told us that Isa Islam said to Bani Israel, وَمُسَبِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّورَاتِ وَلِأُحِلَّ لَكُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي حُرِّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَجِئْتُكُمْ بِآيَاتٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُونَ And I have come confirming that which was before me of the Torah and to make lawful to you part of what had been forbid forbidden to you. And I have come to you with proof from your Lord. So fear Allah and obey me. And this is in Surah Ali Imran, ayah number 50. So this again shows us that Isa alayhi salam, he came and he confirmed what was there in terms of the uh, Torah and he also came with some things that were made lawful for Bani Israel. And he came with clear proof from Allah SWT 
and he told them that they have to fear Allah and they have to follow him. The only way of guidance in his time was that they had to follow Isa alayhi salam. There was no other way for them for guidance. And again, this is something that today's Christians, they bring some of the words that are similar in meaning to this from the Bible. And they say that the Isa alayhi salam said, for example, that I am the way and the truth, etc. And they say that this therefore means that everybody has to only follow Isa alayhi salam up until the day of judgment. That's not the case. That was for Bani Israel. And Isa Islam himself told us that he would, there would be a messenger after him. Okay? So when that messenger comes, then that messenger is the one that has to be followed. So Isa Islam he called the Bani Israel to worship Allah alone and to obey the rulings of the Torah and the Injil. And he debated with them and disputed with them and explained to them the error of their ways. But they reacted stubbornly. Don't forget that these people by this time had already been killing prophets that Allah SWT had sent to them. So they instead they were stubborn and they showed their disbelief among them. So Isa Islam then asked the people that who will be my helpers in the cause of Allah. And then the disciples of Isa Islam they believed him in him. And the uh, reports are that their number was twelve. Allah SWT has told us about this. فَلَمَّا أَحَسَّ عِيسَى مِنْهُمْ مِنْهُمُ الْكُفْرَ قَالَ مَنْ أَنْصَارِي إِلَى اللَّهِ قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ نَحْنُ أَنْصَارُ اللَّهِ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَشْحَدْ بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ Then when Isa a.s. came to know of their disbelief, he said, who will be my helpers in the cause of Allah? Then al-Hawariyoon, the disciples, they said, we are the helpers of Allah. We believe in Allah and we bear witness that we are Muslims, that we are ones who submit to Allah. And they said, رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا بِمَا أَنزَلْتَ وَاتَّبَعْنَا الرَّسُولَ فَاكْتُبْنَا مَا الشَّاهِدِينَ That our Lord, we have believed in what you have set down and we follow the messenger. And so write us down among those who bear witness to the truth. And that's in Surah Ali Imran, ayahs number 52 and 53. So this is when the Isa al -Islam was supported by Allah SWT with great miracles. So for example, he made the thing like the shape of a bird from clay and blew into it and it became a bird and he healed the blind and the leper he brought the death back to uh, the dead back to life and he also did other miracles as well such as telling people what they were eating in their homes and storing in their houses and so this left them the Jews at the time with no argument against Isa alayhi salam so they um, instead responded to that with hostility and enmity towards him and they disbelieved him in him, and they also uh, made accusations and uh, slander against his mother, Maryam salam. And when they saw that the ones who were inclining towards and believing in Isa Islam were the most poor and weak in the society, and they were gathering around him, as is often the case with the truth, and most of the prophets and messengers were aided by the poor and the weak, they then decided to form a plot to kill him. And they themselves had no power at the time either. They were living in a state of subjugation under uh, Roman rule. So they provoked the Roman uh, emperors or the Roman Empire against Isa al -Islam. And they made the governor of uh, the area, the Roman governor, think that Isa al -Islam was calling against the Roman Empire. So the governor therefore issued orders that Isa al -Islam should be arrested and crucified. But Allah SWT saved him from that miraculously. And the way that this was done was that um, the, uh, a certain hypocrite who had um, gone against Isa al -Islam and betrayed Isa al -Islam to the uh, Romans and could possibly be Judas, he was made to look like Isa al -Islam. And instead he was taken and captured by the soldiers and he was uh, crucified in his place. So Isa al -Islam, in our Aqidah and in our firm belief and is confirmed by the Lord of the heavens and the earth was not killed. Okay, Isa al -Islam was not killed. He did not die. His enemies did not get any power over him. And Allah saved him from them and did not allow him to be humiliated. And... Um, Sort of, if you look at the um, Christians and how they have the stories that they call the passion stories, the stories of the uh, crucifixion, it contains severe humiliation. It contains words of kufr. The person who was put onto the cross was screaming and 
uh, asking, oh Lord, oh Lord, why have you forsaken me, etc. This is not uh, befitting a messenger. And um, this did not happen at all. Rather, Allah SWT saved him, of, saved him from all of that and raised him up to the heavens alive. And he is still alive. So, the Quran tells us that he was not crucified. It only appeared to his enemies that he was. And instead, that Allah SWT had raised him up unto the heavens. So Allah SWT um, tells us about this um, in, in the Qur'an as well, in many places. وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا صَلَبُوهُ وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ اخْتَلَفُوا فِيهِ لَفِي شَكِّ مِنْهُ مَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ إِلَّا إِتِّبَاعَ الظَّنِّ وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ يَقِينًا And because of their saying in boast that we killed the Messiah, that Isa, the son of Mary, Maria, uh, the message of Allah, but they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but it appeared so to them. And the resemblance of Isa Islam was put over another man, and those um, who, who differ therein are full of doubts. They have no certain knowledge, and they follow nothing but conjecture, for surely they killed him not. And then Allah SWT tells us, بَلْ رَفَعَهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا حَكِيمًا But Allah SWT raised him uh, unto himself, and Allah is ever all-powerful and all-wise. And then Allah SWT tells us, um, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ وَرَافِعُكَ إِلَيَّ وَمُطَحِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَجَاعِلُ الَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوكَ فَوْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ ثُمَّ إِلَيَّ مَرْجِعُكُمْ فَأَحْكُمُ بَيْنَكُمْ فِي مَا كُنْتُمْ فِيهِ تَخْتَلِفُونَ And remember when Allah said, O oh Isa, I will take you and raise you to myself and clear you of those who disbelieve. And I will make those who follow you superior to those who disbelieve in you. Till the day of resurrection. Then you will return to me and I will judge between you in the matters in which you used to dispute. So here Allah SWT told us that he told Isa Alayhi Salaam while Isa Alayhi was still here on the earth, that Allah will raise him up to himself and that when Isa Alayhi Salaam is gone, those who believed in Isa Alayhi Salaam will be given ascendancy and superiority over those people who disbelieved in him as well. And this is something which is uh, miraculous. So after Isa Alayhi Salaam was raised um, into the heavens, then the followers of Isa al Islam then they um, split into different groups and they became uh, the majority of them misguided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had taken a pledge from the Christians through Isa al Islam that they will follow Isa al Islam and they will follow that which he brought, but afterwards they changed and distorted that and they differed and they turned away from that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore punished them in the world with enmity and hatred amongst them and with torment then in the hereafter as well and this, this is something which historically happened you find for example the Christians purging other Christians yeah? the certain sects of Christians going out hunting down and killing all the other sects of Christians that's why for example you find the Dead Sea Scrolls at, where they were hidden because the Christian sect had to hide because they were, this hatred that Allah SWT, uh, sort of put upon them due to their evil was occurring between them <coughs> Allah SWT has told us وَمِنَ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا إِنَّا نَصَارَا أَخَذْنَا مِثَاقَهُمْ فَنَسُوا حَذَّ مِمَّا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَأَغْرَيْنَا بَيْنَهُمُ الْأَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَضَّاءَ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَصَوْفَ يُنَبِّئُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِمَا كَانُوا يَسْنَعُونَ And from those who call themselves Christians, we took their covenant, but they have abandoned a good part of the message that was sent to them. So we planted among them enmity and hatred till the day of resurrection, and Allah will inform them of what they used to do. That's Surah, Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 14. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took um, uh, the Masih, Isa ibn Maryam, up into heaven, then this is when the followers split. And they split mainly into three different groups. Some of them believed in him as he wanted to be believed. In what he was sent with, that he was a slave and a messenger of Allah. And the son of his female slave of Allah. And some of them instead exaggerated about him and made him the son of God. And some of them, they uh, said that he was the third of a trinity. They made the trinity being God, the Holy uh, Spirit and Jesus. They made this. So this is how they, uh, three of them split up. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described their statements in the Quran and refuted them and gave them the guidance. 
Allah SWT, for example, uh, told us, Lalika Isa ibn Maryam, قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون. That such is Isa, the son of uh, Maryam, it is a statement of truth about which they doubt or dispute. مَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ إِنْ يَتَّخِذَ مِنْ وَلَدٍ سُبْحَانًا إِذَا قَضَى عَمْرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَقُولُ It befits not the majesty of Allah that he should beget a son. Glorified and exalted be he above all that they associate with him. When he decrees a thing, he only says to it, be and it is. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ رَبِّي وَرَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُوهُ هَذَا سِرَاتُ مُسْتَقِيمٍ and Isa al Islam, he said, and verily, Allah is my Lord and your Lord, so worship him alone. That is the straight path. فَاخْتَلَفَ الْأَحْزَابُ مِنْ بَيْنِهِمْ فَوَيْلُ لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ مَشْحَدِ يَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ Then the sects differed about this. So woe unto the disbelievers from the meeting of a great day. So this uh, great dispute uh, continued among them, and that continued for nearly 300 years. And then one of the pagan kings entered into Christianity a person who renamed himself Constantine and he entered the Christian religion and he changed and distorted the religion of the of Isa al -Islam. and he added things to it and he took things away from it and there was a council of Nicaea which was held in 325 AD where they completely distorted the message of Isa al -Islam. and this was the time they permitted pork and they made statues and images in their churches and they made shrines over the graves and they made monasteries and monks and the monasticism and they also uh, added 10 days to the fasting and they made lots of different uh, changes so the last thing I want to mention just because we're running out of uh, time is that Isa al -Islam foretold that our Prophet Muhammad would come so the true followers of Isa al -Islam are the ones who follow Muhammad and he, Allah SWT has told us that um, he gave this message that we said before uh, we, we uh, bought the ayah from Surah Saf, ayah number 6 where he said wa mubashiran bi rasulin ya'ti min ba'di ismuhu Ahmad that and I am uh, giving glad tidings of a messenger to come after me whose name will be Ahmad so this is uh, what happened and the people um, who uh, truly believed in Isa alayhi salam they, uh, they, they believed in Muhammad sallallahu when he came and from them, for example, there's the beautiful story of Salman Farsi radiallahu anh, who went from a Persian Magian fire worshipping background to living in Sham and following the ways of the Nasara and then hearing from their leaders that another Prophet is going to come and he ended up in Arabia and he saw the signs with the Prophet sallallahu and he believed in the Prophet sallallahu and became one of his major uh, companions the last thing uh, say inshallah yeah, is a hadith from uh, Sahih Muslim and also Bukhari but the wording is from Muslim that an Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam walladhi nafsi bi yadihi la yushikanna in yanzila fikum ibn Maryam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hakaman muqsidan fa yaksir as-saliba wa yaqtul al-khanzira wa yada al wa yada al-jizya وَيَفِيدَ الْمَالُ حَتَّى لَا يَقْبَلُهُ حَتَّى لَا يَقْبَلَهُ أَحَدُ Rated from Abu Hurairah radiallahu anh that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said by the one is in whose hand is my soul soon the son of Maryam will descend among you as a just judge he will break the cross and he will kill the pigs and he will abolish the jizya and money will become abundant until no one will accept it so soon here means that it will happen soon and inevitably before the day of judgment and means descend, descend upon you means that Isa Islam will come among this Ummah he will come, he will descend and he will be among this Ummah and he will come as a just judge he will come and uh, rule by this Sharia, the Sharia of Muhammad وسلم, and this Sharia will uh, remain and not be abrogated and what it means by that he will break the cross and kill the pigs means that he will declare the falsities of the Christian religion as false and break the cross in a real sense so that it won't be worshipped and revered and also uh, the eating of pork etc. will be stopped he will abolish the jizya Imam Nawi said about this in his uh, shab of Sahih Muslim that the view of this is that Isa al-Islam will not accept the jizya from Ahlul Kitab so, as Muslim rulers before are doing and have always done but when he comes they will be compelled to believe in him. And if they don't believe in him, then he will uh, fight them. 
and money will uh, become abundant in his time and this is because of the justice that he will spread on the earth Allah's dis uh, blessings will descend and there will be an absence of oppression and wrongdoing amongst the people and the earth will then bring forth all of its treasures and um, people will therefore not have the desire and the covetousness towards the wealth and they will know that the hour is coming soon and then Isa Islam will die and the Muslims will offer the funeral prayer for him and bury him so um, that's inshallah all we have uh, time for um, just one quick thing to mention is that Allah, uh, Allah will cause Isa Islam to disavow himself on the day of judgment from those who, uh, who worshipped him and likewise as well an important thing to mention is that when Isa Islam does return one of the first jobs that he will do is he will kill the Dajjal, the Antichrist. So, subhanahu wa ta'ala, 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 wa ta'